Hello, and welcome to the first Calculus lecture presented by www.free-academy.com. This is the first lecture of an entire series that is going to follow page for page uh, Calculus by Anton Bivens and Davis, 7th editions, with the publisher being John Wiley and Sons Incorporated. Like I said, we're going to follow this uh, book page for page. We're going to do different examples for copyright reasons, but uh, everything should be illustrative of exactly what you would see in this book. And uh, we're going to build an entire calculus course out of it, video, to uh, really try to nail this down for you. And we're going to be starting off with uh, analyzing functions and their graphs. Now, what I have here is a rough graph of what's known as the K wave. K-wave is uh, really important information in economics. A lot of people are very familiar with uh, cycles of recessions, and that's what most people refer to as economic waves, and that's on the order of about 10 years. However, dominating macroeconomics is the K-wave, which is a longer cycle, and it's on the order of about 40 to 60 years. And I actually have a real graph of the K-wave that I'm going to be showing you guys. Uh, pull it up right now. This is the K wave. And uh, it, it's basically, it's been a graph since the beginning of uh, modern capitalism, going from the 750s all the way up to recently. And it's very notable as having a double peak, a trough, double peak, trough, and 40 to 50 year cycles. The longest cycle has actually been 60 years, and this is the most recent one. Uh, there's a lot of debate on why this exactly is. Um, a lot of people will say globalization of some sort. And also, actual U.S. prices deviate from this very, very significantly, which is a matter of great interest as well. But for three solid waves, it actually follows very, very close. And this is really why we do mathematics. By the way, the reference on that is www.goodreads.com.ca-834. I imagine that's copyrighted material as well. Um, we set up equations and we graph information to really get a good mind of what's going on. This is really important in physical science or really any science or business in order to make uh, predictive decisions, which theoretically are beneficial. And this will bring us to the first term of the course, which I'm sure you have all seen before, and that is the word equation. An equation is a relationship between two or more variables, and in this class we're only going to be dealing with the two variable case for the most part, in an organized and predictable fashion. You're all very, very familiar with this. If you're doing calculus, you have almost certainly done algebra before, so you're used to seeing equations. Good example is y equals x squared. Now we just hammered that out of the way really quickly so we can get out our uh, next term and this is actually going to be something pretty important to this class. In your algebra you almost always saw equations written in the form of y equals something. In calculus you're going to see the same thing only it's going to be f of x equals something and that is what's known as a function. The definition for the function, and I'm going to save writing this out. Um, just going to read it off so we can keep moving. The definition of function, if a variable y depends on a variable x in such a way that each value of x determines exactly one value of y, then we say y is a function of x. So I have written here y equals x, f of x equals x squared. You could also write y equals f of x which equals x squared. 
this is going to be a very different notation and uh, there's a lot of utility for this which we'll see coming to our next definition a function f is a rule that associates a unique output with each input if an input is denoted by x then the output is donated by f of x which we have here this is read f of x once we define an equation f of x equals x squared we would note uh, putting different values and evaluating this equation by writing whatever value we're looking for in the parentheses so that's 6 squared you'll write out the equation f with the particular variable and then the relationship on this one side of the parenthesis when you evaluate it you basically treat the variable in the equation as a placeholder and whatever value you put into the parentheses you put into the equation so really your parentheses are placeholders and keep in mind we always use f it's very standard but you'll also see g you'll also see h and so on and so forth. Um, it can really be anything you want it to be one every other notation, something, and parentheses. That's what you can denote as a function. And again, we uh, in order to be a function, you have to have exactly one output for every input. So going to our graph here, in the year 1910, we had exactly one point on the K wave. In 1920, there is exactly one point on the K wave. And uh, this is something we're going to introduce as the vertical line test of functions. The way the vertical line test work is you're going to draw a vertical line at any point in the graph and if it intercepts a function in more than one places then you do not have a function. If it uh, intercepts the function in one or less places then you do have a function and keep in mind that this is global. For all points of the graph you can draw a vertical line and you will never hit more than two points to get a function. So our K wave is a function. There is only one point for each X value. Well, let me draw another graph that's another not a function. We have a circle here. If we draw the line to the left of the circle, we have less than zero, uh, one interaction. So, so far this meets our definition. If we draw a line so that it hits only one point on the edge of the circle, we have one or less points. So it still meets our definition. But if you draw a line through the center of the circle, you have two points. So a circle is not a function because it only takes one. It only takes one point where you can draw a vertical line and hit the function twice in order for it to not be a function. So that is our introduction to functions and their graphs. See you in the next lecture.